fans knew you as Rico. It's great to see you. And by the way, I got to tell you, you look sensational. Thank you very much. I feel good. I just had a hip operation, but feeling real good and uh, very, very excited about what happened this year with the Red Sox. Boy, I mean, I follow them uh, religiously and uh, just a great bunch of guys. Uh, it was, it was, I was saying to the audience, uh, uh, we're proud of them. The, the dream team of 1967 yeah. played in the World Series against the St. Louis Cardinals. Yes. Unfortunately, you lost. Uh, this had to be poetic justice for you this year. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> Naturally, uh, we seem to play uh, Cardinals a lot. And, uh, yeah, early on they beat us 46-67, but we took care of them in, uh, in the last two World Series against them. So... Uh, but they're a great organization as well. So you got two great organizations playing each other. Somebody's got to win. You know, I grew up as a uh, Tiger fan because I'm from Michigan. Mm -hmm. I happen to be good friends now with Denny McLean, who in 1967 won 31 games. How tough was he to hit against? <laughs> Extremely tough, believe me. He had like a 96, 97 mile an hour fastball that rose, seemed like it rose, uh, it was a riser. And then he had a great curveball and changeup. And his control was excellent that, uh, that year. So, no, he was a heck of a pitcher. Listen, I'm not ashamed to say, even though I lived in Michigan, I was a huge fan of yours. Thanks. Because the thing that impressed me as an infielder, a shortstop and third baseman, not only could you hit, but you were a sensational defensive ball player. Well, you know, if you're going to play shortstop a second, you have to fo really focus on uh, defense. And that's what we did. We worked hard to become a you know, major league uh, shortstop and it took a lot of work uh, and then when you get there you know if you could do any hitting this was at that time especially I mean that was uh, icing on the cake so aren't you like fourth still today in fielding percentage uh, for third baseman yeah I think so yeah yeah uh, I've led the league a number of times but we had a guy named Brooks Robinson over there <laughs> and he was pretty good I tell you. There, there was a guy from my hometown that played with uh, Brooks uh, uh, from my hometown of Flint, Michigan, Merv Rettman, uh, oh, Merv, maybe, so re maybe you remember him. Sure. Uh, but I, but I got to ask you, you also played in that uh, year, that uh, dream season year, where there was a terrible tragedy with Tony Canigliaro. Oh, yeah. How bad, how, what went through your mind that day? What was that day like for you and the other teammates when, when he was so tragically struck with that baseball? Well, I was on deck and Tony got hit. And uh, you could see the ball just following him, and he got he tried to move his head, and it was, but it was too late. And he got hit right in the, uh, I think it was right here, and it shattered the bone, his jaw, and blood came up in his in his face like a balloon, you know, like blowing up a balloon. And I said, oh my God, he's going to lose an eye, you know. And uh, actually, he came close to losing his life, but he made a great, great comeback. This is incredible. His his eyesight went to 2300. The eye that he got hit in, I mean, he just couldn't see. And he made a comeback with it, with that, uh, you know, that, that type of eyesight. So it was incredible. Well, there, there's an old expression, good glove, no hit. You were good glove, great hit. You had a great uh, lifetime batting average. You hit uh, two home runs in, I believe, game six of that World Series in 1967. You had a tremendous career. You played for a number of years, and again, uh, I, I know your chronological age, but you look like a million bucks. Uh, thanks a lot. I really feel good, thankfully. And thanks for being here with us today. Great to be here. Uh, congratulations.